Hey cats, it's Ed News Hound Bud here. Time once again for some more running news. Thanks for tuning in and sticking with us here on Ed Bud Running Shoe Reviews, always appreciated. If you've yet to do so, help the channel out by becoming a subscriber, it's free of charge. And also click that bell below for notifications when we roll out the new videos for you. Also helps a huge amount too if you give this video a thumbs up like, and also share it with your running buddies. Mucho gracias. Story one, we have a new 10K women's road record. It's an Ethiopian athlete, I'm not even gonna try and pronounce her name. I don't wanna sort of be disrespectful by pronouncing it incorrectly, so it's on the screen right now. Yahoo Law, perhaps is her surname. Incredible performance here. Clocking in at 29 minutes, 14 seconds over in Spain. It was a coastal 10K race that took place on the 27th of February. This follows some insane times achieved by that same athlete over the last year. I believe she ran one hour, three minutes and 44 seconds on the half marathon, but sadly they found out that that course at the time was too short, which is soul destroying. I can't even imagine how that must feel if you think you've run a course record or perhaps a world record and then find out the course was short. How does that happen? Surely the people go out with the trundle wheel and make sure that it's exactly right. That's what they do here in the UK anyway. I think it was like 54 meters short. I think she finished a clear one minute ahead of the next competitor behind her. Really is a race to remember when you finish that far ahead of someone else. I think the women's track time record for the 10,000 meters is a touch lower, but not by much. So at 29 minutes 01, she's really not far off actually the track. We all know it's a, perhaps a little bit faster on the track. Less to worry about, less bends. Just keep going round and round the same way. Perfect conditions there. There's sort of no wind whatsoever. I think it was about 12 degrees centigrade. I think this is made even more amazing by the fact that back in January, she had a positive virus test. So she's had to overcome that and recover. Still managed to knock it out the park this time around. That must make the record all the more sweet. Look at those shoes too. I've always wanted a pair of those Next% Percent twos in that colorway, but no dice. Story two. Mystic Ed predicts that the Alpha Fly Next% Percent 2 might not be far away. I reckon that Nike could be getting ready to release this one very, very shortly. We've seen loads of images of the GOAT Kipchoge wearing them during his training on the build-up for the Tokyo Marathon. There he is on the track wearing his Alpha Fly Next% Percent 2s, you know, because that's where everybody in England wears them. Seems to be a prototype style colorway, very similar to the Next% Percent 2 we saw last year and the Street Fly that appeared early this year. That man is the true bringer of peace and harmony, isn't he? I hope his efforts inspire a few more disciples to take up this wonderful sport of running. Better it be full of running than some of the stuff that's been going on recently, right? I think with lots of discounted and reduced Alpha Fly shoes out there at the moment, it seems almost time with spring here ready for Nike running to drop their new super cushion distance shoe. Price-wise, I predict a small increase over the current Alpha Fly price. Hopefully it won't be as much as that next nature version which is almost 300 pounds over here in the uk people just don't have the earth credits man i'm not saying that a price increase is right but i just don't see them putting it up as less you know that's not going to happen is it even last year when they released the next percent two the initial versions were a little bit cheaper and then slowly the price has gone up up and now it's pretty much back to exactly where it was as i say i hope it's not 295 earth credits because that's just crazy I will be very keen to try out the Alpha Fly Next% Percent 2 when it does drop and it'll be very exciting to see how Kipchoge gets on wearing those in the Tokyo Marathon. Wouldn't it be ace if he turned up in a pair of street flies just to fool everyone and show them that he could probably destroy them just wearing those. In fact I reckon if he wore a pair of Pan Ams he could still beat everybody. Remember those? In fact I think that Kipchoge and the rest of his gang could probably get away with racing in a pair of the Robert Rosario high-tech soccer shoes that I used to have. They'd still trash everybody. Story three. The London Marathon is one of the biggest of its kind, and many hopeful runners will have their fingers crossed when the ballot is drawn very soon. They're sticking with the October slot for the marathon this year in 2022, and those ballot hopefuls will have to wait a little bit longer as the organisers have announced a delay. I think it's March 14th, that's the day. Put it into your phones, write it onto your calendars. I think they've clearly had some issues trying to figure out who deferred their places from 2020 and also from 2021, perhaps. Of course, everybody wants a place, but the chances are very slim, it has to be said. Unless, of course, you can get a good-for-age place or a charity position as well. Why don't you go and do that? Get yourself a charity place and raise some money for a good cause. You can think of 
loads right now that really need it. I think back in 2020, there were 17,500 places normally available through the ballot. But when you consider back then, over 457,000 people entered the ballot, that's probably gonna give you about a 3.8% chance of getting lucky. That's pretty low. That's well, better than winning the lottery, I suppose. It's still pretty low, isn't it? This is though still one of the cheapest marathons around if you do get lucky and get a place through the ballot. I think it's like 47 Earth credits if you're an affiliated club runner. That's crazy, isn't it? Can't even buy a video game for that these days. So I think that's about one fifth of the non-American price for the New York Marathon. Yes, one fifth of the cost. I'm actually quite taken back by that, that for 47 quid you get to run the marathon. You get a place. That's pretty good, isn't it? Also quite excited to see that Kip Choge is looking at trying to win the big six. So he's done all of them. That'll be awesome. You know that if he does it, Nike will have a special Alpha Fly edition with like some logos or something on it from all six marathons. Maybe they could have an image from each place. So New York could have some sort of like deli sandwich. London could have like fish and chips on it. For the Berlin one, they could have a bratwurst. On those cold winter afternoons, guys, I really like sitting down on the sofa with a nice cup of coffee, maybe a shortbread biscuit, and trawling through the World Athletics shoe compliance list. The rain on the window pane, and I'm there warm, looking at the new development shoes that might have been released. Well, as luck would have it this time round, Nike do have a new development shoe there. A higher stack shoe, must be lower than 40 mil, but certainly higher than 25 millimeters. Looks like this one's okay for road races, but that's your lot. I wonder what it could be. Could that be the Alpha Fly 2? You never know. There's another development spike there too, which appears to be a lower than 20 mil beast. That means it should be available and usable for any track and field activity. Interesting that the Adios 3 through to the 6 would actually be usable on the track. Anything above 800 meters and you can use any of those Adidas shoes. It's kind of bonkers really when you think about it. I'm struggling to believe that's true that the Adios 6 is legal for anything above 800 meters. Surely it can't be right. Hang on, I've got it right here. Let's just, just take it out and have a look. Yeah, it's something not right there. I can't believe that this shoe is okay to use on the track above 800 meters. It must be a different shoe, surely. The same goes for the Takumi Sen 5, 6 and 7. The 7 was dynamite when I used it on the track back last year. The grip was just so good. It was like the shoe really fell at home on that surface. Let's not forget that the Adios series was once a marathon shoe, wasn't it? It was like Adidas's race offering. Now apparently it qualifies for anything above 800 meters. Insane development direction, guys, over the last few years. What used to be a more cushioned type of shoe that you'd perhaps consider wearing for a marathon, well, now it just seems like some sort of low stack slipper. That's all four of today's running news stories. What do you make of these? Let me know down in the comments. The more observant of you would have spotted the Terra Kaiga 8 just behind me. It's been filling the room up with that wonderful rubbery-like odour all afternoon. Hope to get out in this one in the next couple of days. Want to do it some justice on some nice muddy trails and I think that's what we'll have over the next few days. Mmm, good smell score out of the box. I'd say maybe a 8 out of 10. It's time for a musical interlude. I'm pretty sure that 1998 was one of the best years for albums. There's so many good ones released in that year. I've gone back into the archive and dug out The Dirty Boogie by Brian Setzer Orchestra. Now, pretty much every track on here is great. It's got a wonderful sound, earthy guitars, which is what you always get from Brian Setzer, plus those incredible arrangements and orchestrations. The mood here is wonderful. You've got this sort of very turbocharged guitar, but complete with those very old time sort of big band sounds. The winner here though is the instrumental version of Sleepwalk. What an... There's no words, it's just amazing. The sounds that Brian Setzer coaxes out of his Gretsch guitar are heavenly. He uses just about every guitar trick in the book as well. He's kind of fading the notes in with the volume control. There's some serious Bigsby abuse on there. And the way that the strings as well interact with the guitar sound is something else. It really is a masterpiece. This old house and Jump, Jive and Whale are worth checking out too. And there's an incendiary version of Rock This Town. If you've never heard the Brian Setzer Orchestra, you have been missing out. This will complete your life. I promise you. Go and check it out now, guys, from 1998. 
The Dirty Boogie by Brian Setzer Orchestra. All that's left for me to do is say Danke schön, thanks for tuning in, it's always appreciated. If you haven't done so already, help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button and also clicking the bell below for notifications of when I roll out those new videos for you. You can also help us too by giving this video a thumbs up like and also sharing the video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.